Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Fitbit Zip Activity Tracker. This is one of the cheaper models of the Fitbit offering. There are other models that either go on your wrist or are slightly bigger than this one, which track both steps and climbing of stairs. This one is, as I said, the cheapest and the low end model. This one is pretty much like a pedometer on steroids. It is really, really small. And when I say small, we're talking 1.4 inches in height with a width of 1.1 inches and a depth of 0.38. Or as a reference point, this is a US quarter sitting directly on top of it, just to give you an idea. It also is extraordinarily light coming in at only eight grams. Now you may notice that as I talk, the LCD screen will pop up with different types of information, but it'll also shut itself off. That is kind of a power saving mode and roughly will turn itself off uh, between 15 and 20 seconds. And depending on you know what I do in the review, you, you may see it go on and off intermittently between the uh, review here and through the magic of editing, Hopefully that'll change uh, so you don't notice it as much, or maybe you'll notice it more, not sure. Okay, so in the Fitbit zip box itself, you get the Fitbit. As I said before, this is your pedometer on steroids. I'll show you around the device a little bit. It does show a little wear and tear. Uh, I have been using it for the last three and a half months. I actually mainly got it to uh, keep track of to keep track of mileage uh, when I went on a trip to Disney World because everybody says you walk a lot and I wanted to see how much walking you actually do there. That's my primary reason for getting this. Uh, uh, today you'll notice that I've been really, really lapsed as uh, mainly because it's been sitting on the table here as I've been prepping for this review. So we're gonna get back to the Fitbit Zip in a minute, but I wanna show you the other items that come in the box with the Fitbit Zip. So. This is the Fitbit itself. It has a silicone casing here with a metal bit which attaches to the back as the clip. The clip is very good. I generally keep it either in my watch pocket inside this silicone case or just clip it to the inside of my pants pocket. Uh, you'll notice that everything is silicone on this except for the tip here which is a plastic material, which is really good because it helps it slide in and out of your pocket much easier. Uh, I have had it snag a few times on the corner of desks or what have you at my office job. So it has taken a little damage, but nothing terrible. Uh, you also get this. It is a transmitter that you use with the Fitbit program uh, on your computer. Now the Fitbit needs a program in order to keep track of your data. You can either have this attached to your computer uh, and if you're 20 feet away from your computer it will wirelessly send information from the Fitbit to the program as long as you have the computer on. Uh, this is a USB transmitter uh, that uses Bluetooth 4.0 so it's a low powered Bluetooth. Uh, the Fitbit also is compatible with a smartphone app on both iOS and Android but I'll get into that a little later. And the last thing that you get in the box is this. It is the Fitbit key if you want to call it that will open up the back end of the Fitbit. Uh, so you put that in there and twist. And it opens the Fitbit up and you may have seen the battery just kind of fall out the back. It is a standard watch battery, which you can pick up pretty much at any, any local store or like a Radio Shack, something like that. And we will close that back up. And as you can see, once you replace the battery or it loses battery, it kind of also loses all the data that it had for that day. So keep in mind, do this at the end of the day or beginning of the day. And for me, it's no real data loss only because I haven't been doing much today with it, so I'm not terribly worried. Um, okay, so the Fitbit itself, 
Uh, comes in several different colors. That includes a silicone case here. Uh, this may or may not change colors. I'm not sure, but generally I'm going to assume it's going to be black. Uh, the Fitbit itself comes in blue, magenta, white, or charcoal and lime. This is the charcoal version, so it's a black version. Uh, we'll get some of this stuff out of the way here. The screen itself is a uh, tap to activate. You will notice uh, several different icons that appear. Uh, first being, this indicates how many steps you've taken in a day. Now you can see I'm back down to zero because the battery popped out on me. Again, no big deal for me. This is your mileage. This keeps track of how far you've walked from point A to point B. Not really from point A to point B, it just keeps track. So I'm back to uh, 0.3 miles. Uh, this is calories burned. Now this is partially calculated based on information that you enter into the Fitbit site, uh, which is free, but uh, you will have to either create an account or attach it to a Facebook account. Uh, and the calories burn is based on your age, weight, gender, and height, as well as how many steps you've taken is based on, you know, roughly your height. You can get really in depth with, you know, this is my gape in my walk when I do, uh, you know, regular walking. This is what it's like when I run. Uh, I've been lazy and just haven't done that. It's been fairly accurate, so I'm, I'm pleased with that. There are two extra items which are not showing up on the LCD screen. Uh, for the review. Now, that's in part due because I went to the website and I turned them off on the device, which was really nice. Uh, seeing as how the device just lives in my pocket, I generally just use the uh, accompanying Android app to keep track of the information. Uh, the items that are not popping up on this screen are the smiley faces, which you may have seen popping on, on and off when I was first doing the review. So whether you turn that option on or off, they will always pop up when the device first turns on. Uh, but I don't really care, so I turn the smiley faces off. I don't need them popping up for me. Uh, it's supposed to be a marker to let you know how well you're doing. Uh, you can either get a smiley face with tongue sticking out, which is generally what I get. Uh, you get a little smiley face, which means, hey, you're doing a really good job. Or one time when I was uh, hiking in the woods, I noticed that I got a really big grinning smiley face, I guess, uh, colon D for those who would know what that is. And uh, that means you're doing an excellent job. The other item that I don't have turned on is the clock. It sits in my pocket. I don't need a clock. I don't know why they added that. I mean, I keep it in my pocket, but they say you can also attach it if you are a female to a bra strap or, or I guess you could attach it to the collar of your shirt if you're a guy. I just keep it in my pants pocket. So keeping in mind that it is a pedometer on steroids, it does have an accelerometer in it. It does not have an altimeter as it does not climb stairs. You also notice calorie burns is going up even though I'm not really doing anything. That's just the calories I'm burning existing. So that's kind of interesting. They say it has a battery life of between four to six months on a, on a single watch battery. Now that's also dependent on your usage. Uh, when I was using it at uh, my day job, I was pleasantly surprised that I was not as inactive as I thought I was because I work at a desk. Um, and that was back in July. Now, after my long trip to Disney, at the end of my trip, I got a message on my phone, but not on the Fitbit itself, which it's supposed to display if it has a low battery. My phone was telling me it's got a low battery because um, I was doing like 12 miles a day. Once I got back home and stopped being as active, the battery indicated that it went back up to, quote, like a full setting, which I don't really think is accurate, but it looks like it's either gonna display full or you're not, you don't have enough battery. So that's something to keep in mind. The reason I went with this over one of the other ones, aside from not needing to keep track of my sleep, because I already know I don't sleep well, and how many stairs I climbed is, this one is supposed to run for months on just a single battery. Yes, you will be investing in batteries, but this is cheaper than the other ones, and you don't have to charge it like every other day. So it's one less thing to worry about. As long as the Fitbit has a minimum battery, it will track all of your activity fully for seven days. So if you don't sync this to either the computer or the Android app, you will be able to keep track of that information for seven days. If you go past the seven days, uh, eight days, up to 23 days, it will summarize your daily activity and not give you quite as in depth but it will still track that. The Fitbit itself here is water resistant. However, this plastic Fitbit, not so much. If you notice when I open the back to show you the watch battery, you'll notice that there was no rubber gasket on the back. The only way that it is water resistant is if 
you throw it into the silicone case here, which is kind of tricky to do on camera, but uh, there we go. So that's what the Fitbit looks like in the silicone case. Now, when it's in the silicone case, it's rain splash and sweat proof. Now I did wear the Fitbit, uh, like I said, while I was in Disney, went on Splash Mountain, had no problems. It still worked after that. So don't submerge it in water, but it can take a little water. Fitbit program itself is compatible with, mo with both Mac and PC. Windows, you're looking at uh, XP and up, and Macs, you're looking at OS X 10.5 and up. You will need a USB port and an internet connection because the program on the computer is talking to the Fitbit website in the cloud. And that is another good thing about the Fitbit Zip here, aside from it being cheap. Uh, if you get it from the Fitbit website, it's like $60. If you find it on Amazon, it's about $47, uh, is the community that Fitbit has and the fact that they don't lock your data down. Uh, you can export your Fitbit data to other fitness tracking programs. Uh, I don't really do that. Like I said, I just kind of wanted to keep track minimally, not share with uh, other programs or people for that matter. You can set up Fitbit groups of people and have little competitions back and forth as to who walked the most and so on. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly show you the Fitbit app just so you can get an idea of how the information will display in a graphical format, which is kind of one of the other reasons you get something like this as opposed to just getting a regular pedometer and keeping track of that information yourself. All right, so here is an example of what the Fitbit app looks like on my Android phone. Uh, you'll notice You'll notice right here that it's saying the last time that the Fitbit Zip synced was about 27 minutes ago. It shows you steps, mileage, calories burned, uh, very active minutes, and shows you my weight. You can also keep track of food and water intake. I did this for a little bit, but uh, generally I'm not, I'm not as disciplined with that, so I, I just kind of gave up on it. If you tap up here in the left-hand corner, you get the dashboard, which is what you are currently looking at. Friends list if you have it. Challenges is something new that they came out with, which will allow you to you know, do weekly, daily, monthly challenges. Uh, device allows you to do device settings. And settings will let you do your Fitbit profile settings. Help is just that help and log out is log out. So if we click on any one of these items, it will bring up a graphical chart of how you did. Now this one is not particularly good. So what we're going to do is today wasn't particularly good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to when I was on my trip to go grab some more impressive data. All right. So we'll, we'll start with this one. So here we see if we click on steps, it will show you in a chart form, we'll expand it that way, what your activity looked like. Now, it will also show you the peaks of when you were doing the most activity. Now, here you can change it day, week, month. Likewise, if we click on steps, it'll show you how many steps and what your, your peak times were. Now, you will notice that these are all green and it keeps track of very active. Now, if we go to some of my lazier days here, You'll note, well, that's still green. Yeah, here we go, that was a travel day. Uh, so you'll notice that these items are blue as opposed to green, and this guy here is orange. What that is is the Fitbit can actually, since it has the accelerometer, keep track of how active you are. So if you're just walking at a slow pace, you'll get something like this orange line. But if you're doing a really good job, it pops it to this green line. And if you're just not doing much, it keeps it at that stagnant blue. So it's a visual way that you can kind of keep track of how well you're doing. Yep, that, that's just the quick look at what the app looks like. If you want a more in-depth look at that, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do that. So all in all for what you get with the Fitbit Zip and the price tag that it comes with, I think it's well worth it, even if you're remotely interested in keeping track of your activity levels in any way, shape or form. 
If you want to share your activities with your friends, then Fitbit's definitely the way to go. Uh, just keep in mind that you read their privacy policies very clearly, uh, as they did come into a, a little scrutiny lately because they were selling some information uh, to advertisers. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. Uh, most of the information that I give to websites like this, especially if I don't trust them quite as much, or if I'm just doing something for testing purposes is not my correct data. But that's just something for you to keep track or uh, to be aware of. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad company. And like I said, for the price that you get for this and what it actually keeps track of, I think it's actually well worth looking into. I probably will, actually no, I will be continuing to use the Fitbit to keep track of my activity just because it's kind of self-affirming because you know we are in the age of the quantified self. Uh, so I'll be continuing to use it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. I've been Wander001. Thanks for watching.